Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Reading Through the Bible in a Year. I'm so happy you joined us. Um, I know if you're in the United States, chances are you may be in an area that's getting snow or ice or both. Um, here in Northeast Tennessee, it's just raining, been raining, going to keep raining most of the week. So... Uh, just putting God's protection around our house since we have so many trees that have died up on the hill behind us that it doesn't get too wet and they start falling. We haven't been able to get somebody out here to cut them down because there's so many and it costs money. Especially when you got a hill like ours and they have to drop them just right, just... Uh, from hitting power lines. So, anyway, we're going to get back in the Word. Today we'll be in 1 Kings chapter 7, and it's a pretty long chapter, so that's going to be the only one that we'll get through today. You may hear my little old man pacing in here. I'm not quite sure what his problem is, but um, he just goes to pacing. I think he gets stiff and sore because he's getting on up there in age and I think it just kind of helps him to get up and move around quite a bit. But because we have vinyl plank floors, you can hear his nails on them no matter how short I cut them. But their, their nails do need cutting right now. I can't do it by myself because my dogs are absolutely hate the clippers so it takes at least two of us to cut nails especially when you've got little short dogs whose legs aren't very long it's so hard to hold on to them they slip right out of your hands anyway okay back into first kings chapter seven but solomon was building his own house 13 years and he finished all his house he built also the house of the forest of Lebanon. The length thereof was an hundred cubits, and the breadth thereof fifty cubits, and the height thereof thirty cubits, upon four rows of cedar pillars with cedar beams upon the pillars. And it was covered with cedar uh, above upon the beams that lay on forty-five pillars, fifteen in a row. And there were windows in three rows, and a light was against light in three ranks. And all the doors and posts were square with the windows, and light was against light in three ranks. And he made a porch of pillars. The length thereof was fifty cubits, and the breadth thereof thirty cubits. And the porch was before them, and the other pillars and the thick beam were before them. Then he made a porch for the throne where he might judge even the porch of judgment and it was covered with cedar from one side of the floor to the other and his house where he dwelt had another court within the porch which was of the like work solomon made also an house for pharaoh's daughter whom he had taken to wife like unto this porch and these were of costly stones according to the measures of huge stones sawed with saws within and without even from the foundation unto the coping, and so on the outside toward the great court. And the foundation was of costly stones, even great stones, stones of ten cubits and stones of eight cubits. And above were costly stones, after the measures of huge stones and cedars. And the great court round about was with three rows of huge stones and a row of cedar beams, both for the inner court of the house of the Lord and for the porch of the house. And King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. He was a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass. And he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon wrought and wrought all his work. For he cast two pillars of brass, an eighteen cubits high apiece, and a line of twelve cubits did compass either of them about. And he made two 
chapters of molten brass to set upon the tops of the pillars. The height of the one chapter was five cubits, and the height of the other chapter was five cubits. And nets of checker work, and wreaths of chain work for the chapters, which were upon the top of the pillars, seven for the one chapter and seven for the other chapter. And he made the pillars in two rows round about upon the one network to cover the chapters that were upon the top with pomegranates, and so did he for the other chapter. And the chapters that were upon the top of the pillars were of lily work in the porch, four cubits. And the chapters among the two pillars had pomegranates also above, over against the belly which was by the network, and the pomegranates were two hundred in rows, round about upon the other chapter. And he set up the pillars in the porch of the temple, and he set up the right pillar and called the name thereof Jashin, and he set up the left pillar and called the name thereof Boaz. And upon the top of the pillar was lily work, so was the work of the pillars finished. And he made a molten sea ten cubits from the one brim to the other. It was round all about, and his height was five cubits, and a line of thirty cubits did compass it round about. And under the brim of the round about there were knobs compassing it, ten in a cubit compassing the sea round about. The knops were cast in two rows when it was cast. It stood upon twelve oxen, three looking toward the north and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south and three looking toward the east. And the sea was set above upon them, and all their hinder parts were inwards. And it was an hand breadth thick, and the brim thereof was wrought like the brim of a cup with flowers of lilies. It contained two thousand baths. And he made ten bases of brass, four cubits was the length of one base, and four cubits the breadth thereof, and three cubits the height of it. And the work of the bases was on this manner. They had borders, and the borders were between the ledges. And the borders that were between the ledges were lions, oxen, and cherubims. And upon the ledges there was a base above, and beneath the lions and oxen, were certain additions made of thin work, and every base had four brassen wheels, and plates of brass, and the four corners thereof had undersetters. Under the laver were undersetters molten at the side of every addition, and the mouth of it within the chapter and above was a cubit, but the mouth thereof was round after the work of the base, a cubit and a half. And also upon the mouth of it were gravings with their borders, four score, not round. And under the borders were four wheels, and the axle trees of the wheels were joined to the base, and the height of a wheel was a cubit and half a cubit. And the work of the wheels was like the work of a chariot wheel. Their axle trees and their naves and their fellows and their spokes were all molten, and there were four undersetters to the four corners of one base, and the undersetters were of the very base itself, and in the top of the base was there a round compass of half a cubit high, and on the top of the base the ledges thereof and the borders thereof were of the same. For on the plates of the ledges thereof and on the borders thereof he graved cherubims, lions, and palm trees according to the proportion of every one and additions round about. After this manner he made the ten bases, all of them had one casting, one measure, and one size. Then made he ten lavers of brass. One laver contained forty baths, and every laver was four cubits, and upon every one of the ten bases one laver. And he put five bases on the right side of the house, and five on the left side of the house, and he set the sea on the right side of the house eastward over against the south. And Hiram made the labors and the shovels and the basins. So Hiram made an end of doing all the work that he made King Solomon for the house of the Lord. The two pillars and the two bowls of the chapters that were on top of the two pillars 
and the two networks to cover the two bowls of the chapiters which were upon the top of the pillars, and four hundred pomegranates for the two networks, even two rows of pomegranates for one network to cover the two bowls of the chapiters that were upon the pillars, and the ten bases and ten labors of the bases, and one sea and twelve oxen under the sea, and the pots and the shovels and the basins and all these vessels which Hiram made King Solomon for the house of the Lord were of bright brass, in the plain of Jordan did the king cast them in the clay ground between Succoth and Jarthan. And Solomon left all the vessels unweighed, because they were exceeding many. Neither was the weight of the brass found out. And Solomon made all the vessels that pertained unto the house of the Lord, the altar of gold, and the table of gold, whereupon the shoe bread was, and the candlesticks of pure gold, five on the right side and five on the left, before the oracle, with the flowers, and the lamps, and the tongs of gold, and the bowls, and the snuffers, and the basins, and the spoons, and the censers of pure gold, and the hinges of gold, both for the doors of the inner house, the most holy place, and for the doors of the house, to wit, of the temple. So was ended all the work that King Solomon made for the house of the Lord, and Solomon brought in the things which David his father had dedicated, even the silver and the gold and the vessels did he put among the treasures of the house of the Lord. And that will do it for chapter 7 in First Kings. I hope you all have a wonderfully blessed day and are able to stay warm and dry. And uh, not get too terribly much snow. I know I have uh, texted with a friend in... Um, Western Canada a couple of days ago, and she said it's been minus 67 degrees up there. I, I can't even imagine. I can't, I can't even imagine. But everybody stay warm and dry. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have a blessed day. Be kind to one another, and we'll see you next time.